This video is part two of a problem that I've been looking at of a man sitting in a bosun's chair and he's pulling on the rope allowing him to accelerate himself either up or down depending on what the tension in the rope is. In part one of the video we were given what the tension in the rope was and we calculated what the acceleration of the man was and we calculated the upward force of the chair on the man. In this problem, we're given the acceleration of the man and the chair, and we're going to calculate what the tension in the rope is, and again, we're going to calculate the upward force of the chair on the man. And like I did in part one, I'm going to solve this two different ways. I'm going to first solve it a little bit longer by looking at the forces acting on the chair and the forces acting on the man and setting up two equations with two unknowns and using substitution to solve. And then I'll go through and I will solve it using the man and the chair together. It's a little bit quicker for getting the tension, but to be able to get the upward force of the chair on the man, you need to be able to set up the individual forces on the individual objects anyways. And so my recommendation is when people are first learning how to do these problems, that you work through it the longer way and make sure that you understand it and use the, the quicker way to double check yourself. I have the same man and the same chair as I did in part one. The man has a mass of 58 kilograms. The chair has a mass of three kilograms. And so we calculated in the previous video the force of gravity acting on the man, 58 times 9.8, and the force of gravity acting on the chair, which is 3 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared. So the force of gravity acting on the man is 568.4 newtons, and the force of gravity acting on the chair is 3 kilograms times 9.8, or 29.4 newtons. We also have the man pulling down on the rope. And by Newton's third law, that means that the rope pulls up on the man's hand. That is, the force that's acting on his hand equals the tension in the rope. And the tension is how hard the rope is pulling on either end, since this is a massless, frictionless pulley. And so the tension, that same unknown tension, is pulling up on the chair. And in this problem, we're given that the man and the chair are accelerating downward at 0.8 meters per second squared. He still needs to exert a tension in the rope to lower himself down so that he's not just in free fall, but he is allowing himself to accelerate downward. And I am going to let down be the positive direction. I'm going to let the direction of the acceleration be the positive direction for this. So now I'm going to look at the two objects, the man and the chair, independently. First, I'm going to look at the man. There are three forces acting on the man. We have the unknown tension in the rope pulling up on his hand. We have the force between the man and the chair, that upward force of the chair acting on the man. I'm labeling it FMC for the force between the man and the chair. And then we have the downward force of gravity acting on the man, the 568.4 newtons. And we were given that the acceleration is downward and is 0.8 meters per second squared. So looking at the forces acting on the man, the net force acting on the man is the individual forces acting on the man added together and I'm making the downward forces positive and the upward forces negative. I'm letting the direction of my acceleration be the positive direction. So I have the downward force of gravity, 568.4 newtons, plus negative T, the tension in the rope, plus negative FMC, the force between the man and the chair. The tension and that force of the chair and the man are both negative because they're both acting upwards opposite what I called the positive direction. So the net force is the individual forces added together. The net force on the man is also the mass of the man times the acceleration of the man. 
So that's 58 kilograms times an acceleration of 0.8 meters per second squared. And because I'm calling the downward direction positive, that acceleration is positive. So multiplying those together, I know that the net force is 46.4 newtons. So combining those two equations together, I have 568.4 newtons minus T minus the force between the man and the chair equals 46.4 newtons. Now I'm going to look at the forces acting on the chair. Pulling upwards on the chair, I have the tension in the rope. This is the tension from the left-hand side of the rope in this diagram. Also acting directly on the chair, I have the downward force of gravity of the chair, the 29.4 newtons. And finally, I have the man pushing down on the chair. The chair pushes upwards on the man, and so the man pushes downwards on the chair. That's Newton's third law. The force of the chair pushing upwards on the man and the force of the man pushing downwards on the chair are the same size force, but they're in opposite directions. So because it's the same size as that FMC that I had for the man, I'm giving it the same label. It, the size of that force is the same force, F, man, chair, but that force is acting downwards. So just like before, it's accelerating downward. I'm going to let down be my positive direction. And my process is going to be the same. I'm going to set up the net force acting on the chair is the individual forces, those three forces that are acting on the chair added together. I have two downward forces, the force of gravity on the chair and the force of the man pushing down on the chair. Those are both going to be positive. And I have the tension in the rope pulling upwards. So that tension in the rope is negative. In my equation, T is describing how big the tension in the rope is. So the fact that the, those tensions are pulling in the negative direction, I include the negative sign explicitly. So besides the individual forces added together, the net force acting on the chair is also the mass of the chair, three kilograms, times the acceleration of the chair, 0.8 meters per second squared. So multiplying those together, I get 2.4 newtons. So combining these two equations, I have 29.4 newtons plus the force between the man and the chair minus T equals 2.4 newtons. So now I have two equations with two unknowns. So just like the last video, I'm going to go through and I'm going to solve this using substitution. I'm going to solve for the force between the man and the chair in terms of the tension, and then I'm going to substitute that into the other equation. So I'm going to look at the equation for the man, that red equation. I'm going to solve for FMC by itself, and I'm going to substitute that into the blue equation for the force acting on the chair. So taking this force to the other side of the equal sign, I have the force between the man and the chair equals 568.4 newtons minus T minus 46.4 newtons. So I took this 46.4 over to the other side as well. Or simplifying that, I have the force between the man and the chair is 522 minus T. So now I'm going to take that and I'm going to substitute it in for the force between the man and the chair in my equation for the chair. So I have 29.4 newtons plus the force between the man and the chair. So that's the 522 newtons minus T. Then I also have another minus T equals 2.4 newtons. So adding up the numbers, I have 29.4 plus 522 minus 2.4. So that's 549 newtons equals, and I had negative T minus T, so that's negative 2T. And I'm taking that over to the right-hand side of the equal sign, so that's positive 2T. Or the tension is 549 divided by 2, which is 
274.5 newtons. So for this man to give himself a downward acceleration of 0.8 meters per second squared, he needs to pull on the rope with a force of 274.5 newtons. And then to find the force of the chair pushing up on the man, I take that tension and I substitute it in to my equation where I have the force between the man and the chair in terms of T. So that force of the chair pushing up on the man is going to be 522 newtons minus 274.5 newtons. Or the force of the chair pushing up on the man is 247.5 newtons. And at this point, we've solved the question. We have found what the tension was that gave the man a downward acceleration of 0.8 meters per second squared, and we found the force of the chair pushing up on the man if he's accelerating down at 0.8 meters per second squared. So now I'm going to look at this problem by looking at the man and the chair together as a single system. Looking at this as a system, I'm looking at the man and the chair together as one object. And the man and the chair together have a total mass of 58 kilograms plus 3 kilograms, or 61 kilograms. So the net force that's acting on the system, I'm adding together all of the external forces. That's the force of gravity on the chair, the force of gravity on the man, and that is the tension pulling up on the man's hands and the tension pulling up on the chair. We're only looking at the external forces. So it's forces due to objects outside the system. So the rope is outside the system. The earth is outside the system. That's where the force of gravity comes from. So external forces are forces from objects outside of the system on objects that are in the system. The man and the chair together are my system, so the force of the man on the chair and the force of the chair on the man, those are internal forces, and so those do not get included when we look at the net external force acting on the system. I'm letting down be positive, so I have positive 29.4 newtons plus positive 568.4 newtons plus the two tensions, but both of them are pulling in the negative direction, so it's plus negative T plus negative T. So simplifying that a little bit, I have 597.8 minus 2T. I also know that the net force acting on the system is the mass of the system times the acceleration of the system. The mass of the system is 61 kilograms, and the acceleration is 0.8 meters per second squared. So multiplying those together, 61 times 0.8 gives me 48.8 newtons. And so I can combine those two equations together. So 597.8 newtons minus 2t equals 48.8 newtons, or 549 equals 2t, or like before, I get my tension is 274.5 newtons. So if all I'm interested in is what the tension in the rope is, then this systems approach is definitely faster. We can look at the net forces acting on the system, we can look at the total mass of the system, the acceleration of the system, and we can combine those together and we could solve for the tension. But I'm also being asked to find the force of the chair pushing up on the man, which means that I need to be able to set up the equation for the forces acting on the man, like I did in the first part. I have the tension pulling up on the man, but I just found that that was 274.5 newtons. So that tension is pulling up on his hands. And I also have the upward force of the chair. So I have the upward force of the chair acting on the man, and I have the downward force of gravity acting on the man. For this, I'm only looking at the gravitational force acting on the man. I'm looking at the man by himself. And that force was 568.4 newtons. The acceleration is downwards 0.8 meters per second squared. So just like before, I'm going to let down be positive. So the net force acting on the man 
is positive 568.4 newtons plus negative 274.5 newtons, the tension in the rope, plus negative force of the chair on the man. And the net force acting on the man is the mass of just the man, 58 kilograms, times the acceleration, 0.8 meters per second squared, which is 46.4 newtons. And so combining those together, I have 568.4 minus 274.5, which is 293.9, minus the force of the chair on the man, equals 46.4 newtons. Or the force of the chair on the man is going to be 293.9 minus 46.4, which is 247.5 newtons, just like we found previously. This systems approach is a little bit more difficult for people because you have those two tensions in the rope both pulling up on the system. There was the tension pulling up on the man and the tension pulling up on the chair. And so when I was going through and looking at this system, I needed to make sure that I included that tension twice. If we're looking at the individual forces, it's definitely easier to see how the tension gets included. You had, when you're looking at the man, you have the tension pulling up on the man. When you're looking at the chair, you have the tension pulling up on the chair. So when we had the two objects individually, it was just a little bit easier with setting it up. So it's a little bit longer to solve, but it's a little bit easier for people to solve. You're less likely to make a mistake doing it by looking at the individual forces that are acting. And so in the first part, we were given the tension and we calculated acceleration. In this second part, we were given acceleration and we calculated the tension in the rope. Both variations of that problem are important. Both of them are types of things that you could be asked to do. And these are both good examples of looking at a system of objects, setting up your equations, looking at the forces acting on each object. So looking at connected objects and looking at the forces acting between the objects, setting up your individual equations for the forces acting on each object, and using systems of equations to solve for the acceleration and to solve for an unknown force. Or, if we're given the acceleration, to solve for two different unknown forces. But it is useful once you get the hang of setting up the individual equations for the objects, it is useful to go through and learn the system approach because often you're going to be asked just if you're given the tension, calculate the acceleration like we did in part one, or in this problem, if I'm given the acceleration, calculate the tension in the rope. The force of the chair acting on the man is something that's not found as often. And so if all we wanted was this tension in the rope, I would probably have looked at this using the system approach. It's just a little bit faster for calculating that tension.